Hey everyone, so as you can see the 1.16.210 update released just today and while this is a minor update it brings some very interesting new fixes and changes that I'm excited to show you because some of them are very relevant notably for mob farms and yes that means that you can expect some mob farm videos in the future but we'll get into that later. Alright let's start right away. So one first feature that is a bit overlooked but I still find interesting is that the screen animations are a lot smoother now. So I don't mean to flex but I do have a 144Hz monitor and it is extremely noticeable how much more fluid these animations are. They weren't exactly choppy before but they weren't the smoothest either and now it's just very fluid. I generally don't use these screen animations myself but I can see a lot more people using them now because they are very nice to look at now. Next up there's finally a full screen toggle button. So like in Java Edition now you can press F11 and it will toggle your full screen. That is extremely extremely important because I absolutely hate going into the video settings and toggling the full screen from here is extremely annoying, especially for recording because when I record I have to record it in full screen because obviously recording it in windowed is a bit less pleasing to look at. And well, when I am in full screen, but I want to just play normally, like do testing, it is very inconvenient because when I switch to another tab, then it will like automatically minimize and all that. And then I have to like reload the game, you know, the white loading screen pops up and that is quite annoying. Let's check out a change that might be relevant for speedrunners. Now generally I'm not connected with the speedrunning community, but I do know that chests are very valuable. So there is a change made in 116.210 that when you use the same seed, chests will always generate the same contents. So I am in the seed that I selected before and let's take a look at the contents of the chests. Some apples, alright. Now let's create that exact same seed again. So I think it was Coastal Village, that's right. Let's go to Creative and do that again. I'm not cutting anything, well, you know, editing anything so that we see that it is indeed the exact same. Let's head back over to that same house. And if that was properly applied, then the content should be the exact same. All right, so they are the exact same. That means if you're a speedrunner and you like to do set seed speedruns, you won't encounter any randomness when it comes to loot generated in chests now. Alright, the next change is regarding TNT and how entities are launched when they are in water. Well, when the TNT is submerged in water. So previously, what would happen when TNT was submerged in water is that it would not launch entities and players unless they are in creative mode. Now they should launch entities and players that are in survival mode as well. To demonstrate this I will make use of my TNT conveyor design. I designed this a long time ago, it was like maybe half a year ago and I didn't find it useful at all. It's not really useful in the slightest but it will work very well for this showcase and besides even if it's not useful it is still very fun. I'm just going to demonstrate how it works so that you can see how it works. So basically the TNT is dispensed and using a translocation highway, oh god that is loud, well two translocation highways it basically well moves off the TNT into the water and it all explodes in one spot. Now that you saw how it works, let's demonstrate it in creative mode first and we will do survival mode afterwards. Maybe I will die in survival mode, I'm not sure, I don't remember if you take damage when TNT is in water, but let's do it in creative mode first. By the way, be prepared for a very loud bang. Yeah, that does launch you up very far. That's the fun part of it. It's not really super useful because I imagine you take a ton of damage, but we will see once, well, we try and survive mode. And by the way, it takes a long, long time to get back down. All right, we are back down here and we are in survival mode. So let's try it again. Maybe I will die. And if so, goodbye world. Okay, I did not die, but I will surely die when I fall down. Actually, no, I have an elytra. But yeah, that does work now, and that is pretty fun. Now let's try that with an entity, and not the player. And I think I'm gonna use another piece of TNT, because it is just easy to place. Oops, did not mean to do that. So let's see if our super expensive TNT cannon works out. 
Okay, <laughs> I assume it worked because I don't see it anywhere and it didn't just blow up on the spot. It must be somewhere in oblivion. Let's just fly over there to see if it was launched all the way. You know what, it is probably somewhere in the sky, but I think, yeah, it probably went somewhere to heaven. Poor TNT. By the way, if you can think of any uses for this TNT conveyor, then let me know in the comments. I never made a dedicated video on it because there's not much to say on my part, but if you are creative enough and come up with an idea, then let me know in the comments. Now I just want to say an enderpearl cannon will not work because... Okay, I just waited for the boom so that you actually hear me. Because enderpearls don't actually move outside of the simulation range. And as you know, the simulation range isn't that big, so yeah, that is not very useful at all, and you won't really get teleported. Let's get to probably the largest fix, that is in 1.16.210, and by largest I don't really mean that it took a lot of work or anything, but it is the most relevant for most players. And it is actually quite surprising, but it is that coral fans are now properly farmable. So that is a coral fan, and as you can see, when I bone mill this dirt underwater, they will actually spawn. Well, now there's a bunch of seagrass, but they will actually get placed. Now, previously, it would only place down the normal coral. By the way, the changelog states that this works in the warm ocean biomes, and of course it does. But, well, it works in all biomes. This is not a warm ocean biome, and it works very well. But this is very nice to make a coral fan farmable, because previously, this one was the only one that you could farm with this, well, method. So it might be a little confusing, let me clear that up. There is the coral, the normal coral, the coral fan, and then there is the coral block. Let me find that one real quick. Actually, I have no idea where that is. There it is. So, there is the coral block, the coral, and the coral fan. You may wonder, why is this so relevant? Well, this is extremely useful for mob farms. Because, as you may know, when you have a trapdoor that is open, it will trick mobs into walking off a block, because, well, they cannot distinguish whether the trapdoor is closed or open, and they are stupid, and they just walk into, well, whatever is below those trapdoors. Previously, we could do the exact same thing with buttons. Buttons used to also trick those mobs from walking off, but the major advantage with buttons is that it does not have a collision box, unlike trapdoors. So, open trapdoors, you can stand on them, but buttons, you cannot. I believe this button method was patched out in the 1.16.100 update, and at that point, a lot of mob farms were using buttons to trick mobs from walking off ledges, because, well, this is very useful, and buttons are quite cheap. Unfortunately, that is not anymore an option. Trapdoors still work, they always do, and I doubt they'll remove that because it works on the Java edition. And, well, while the trapdoors are still a viable alternative, they are inferior because, as I've mentioned before, they have a collision box, meaning that there's less space for mobs to fall down. And that is especially relevant in mob farms, where you want the densest possible layout, and basically just want mobs to easily walk off without sacrificing on the density of available spawn spots. Coral fans do the exact same as buttons. They can be placed on sides, and they trick mobs into walking off. And of course they have no collision box, which is a major advantage over trapdoors. Coral fans have always done that, but it was only recently discovered that they actually do that. It was a good friend of mine called Rufus Atticus who discovered. By the way, check the description. I have linked his channel because he does very interesting stuff and you should definitely check him out. But until this update, which is 1.16.210, it was impossible to actually farm them, so they were not actually renewable. Since the only type of coral you actually got from bone milling dirt on the water, or sand, I don't remember which blocks it was, but bone milling stuff on the water, was coral. You only got these coral blocks, and you cannot place those on the sides. And that, of course, is a major deal breaker, because when you want mobs to walk off, 
you cannot obviously have anything below it. So that was a bummer, but now you can actually get these coral fans from, well, farming it like this. And by the way, I have linked a farm that does exactly that in the description by a good friend of mine called Kairiu. So if you're going to build a mob farm in the future or want to modify your existing mob farm with coral fans, then make sure to check the description. I have linked that video. So now that these coral fans are indeed renewable, and by the way, like I said, you don't need to do it in a warm ocean biome, you can build it literally anywhere. Okay, maybe not in the nether, because it is a bit warm in there. I am looking forward to making mob farm tutorials that make use of this. So you can expect to see mob farm tutorials in the future, and some of them will use the coral fan. Now, whether you prefer the coral fans over the trapdoors is up to you, because you could consider chopping down trees easier than bow mealing underwater and using silk touch to collect those coral fans, but they are objectively superior when it comes to high-end mob farming, because, well, they do not have a collision box. One less quality of life change is that you now experience ambient sounds in the nether, and that was not previously a thing on the better condition, while it was on the Java edition. And of course, ambient sounds make the nether feel a lot more immersive. And this is a great addition. Because, well, in better condition, to be honest, things always feel a little dead because they lack death and all that. And, well, having ambient sounds is pretty great now. By the way, if you are in mobile, you do need to download the music pack from the marketplace because that includes those ambient sounds but yeah nice change i definitely approve of that and it is great to make the nether more ambient now the next technical addition that i am really happy that they introduced is the so-called game test framework now it sounds complicated but it is fairly simple so first to activate it you need to go into the world settings and there's a toggle called enable game test framework and for that, you have to have experimental gameplay on any world, so it will simply make a, well, copy of the world. Let's head into it, and I will explain what the game test framework is all about. So the game test framework is essentially a way to create custom tests using JavaScript scripts that you place in your behavior pack. And it does exactly what it says, it runs tests for the game and you can check for certain conditions, and they can return true, they can return false, all that. There is a set of built-in game tests that I assume the developers included for, well, demonstration purposes, or also maybe they use them themselves, and those tests can, for example, include pathfinding and all that. So you can do game test run, and as you can see, there's a bunch of built-in tests, like I said, you can make your own tests, it involves some JavaScript coding, and, well, add them to your behavior pack. Let's run one of the built-in ones, and let's do that. So what it does is that it loads in a structure, and every game test has to also include a structure. And as you can see, this one in particular tests if the villager will be able to pathfind around that wall to his bed. And as you can see in the chat, it passed. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And that is only one of the many game tests. So you saw that game test before, you check to pass or fail was basically if the villager would well reach its bed. Now there are a lot of different game tests and I'm going to show you the ones that are built in. You can actually do game test run all and that will run all the game tests that are available. Now it takes some time for them to load in and right now there are only a few loaded in but those are all the game tests. These are mostly pathfinding game tests. But there are some other ones, like if the concrete manages to solidify when it comes to contact with water. And yeah, now you can see that all of the others loaded in. There are a lot of pathfinding game tests. And, well, overall, it is a very nice platform, so to speak, to allow more in-depth tests. However, it will require you some JavaScript knowledge and... Yeah, it's certainly not for everyone, that's also why it's not available on consoles, because consoles cannot load in custom behavior packs in the first place. But yeah, 
I think it is a very nice addition and it just shows that the game developers do not completely neglect, um, well, technical Minecraft like a lot of players would believe. So yeah, this is definitely a step in the right direction. As these updates always do, this update also includes a lot of other bug fixes and I'm not going to address any other of them because I already covered the ones that I deem most relevant. But well, you can always look up those bug fixes yourself in the changelog post. I'll link that changelog post in the description, so if you want to check that out, go ahead and check that out. Anyways, that does it for me, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, because I do a lot more of this content, so if you want to stay tuned, go ahead and, well, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you around. Bye!